morning. Before I begin this video, we're going to be talking about core aeration. I want to stress something. I, I focus a lot on picking up my cores in this video and talking about the cores, but that's because I'm a real mower and I real mow really low. 95% of the lawns that get a core aeration done leave their cores down and it's fine. It can actually be beneficial, especially if you're seeding. And over a few days, over a week or two, those cores are going to go away. But if you are a real mower that's trying to take your lawn down super, super short, and you've got these cores sitting there and you're going to run a real mower over it, you can really do some, not damage, but man, you can really dull up a blade. So I'm just saying in this video, I do talk about trying to get some of these cores up, but there's a reason why. And that's because we're out here testing this new real mower and we're trying to get this down low. But I think, honestly, I think we're getting some heavy rain moving in. I think it'll be fine out here. Plus I'm putting down seed. So before I begin, I don't want people to think that you got to go out there and pick up your cores because it is a butt whip and you'll see having to deal with them. So here we go. Oh, Lordy, Lordy, Lordy. <laughs> Why do I hate these things? Why do I love these things? Today, we're gonna to talk about core aeration, and I'm gonna give you some tips. I'll go over some suggestions, we'll talk about it a little bit, and then later, we came out here and we did a core aeration on this pond front and on the big area, and it was a butt whipping. So, uh, let's go talk. So, no matter what I say, there's gonna be someone that says, you should leave your cores on the ground because they add organic matter and they add nutrition. Okay, so let me get this right. I take some dirt from here and I put it here and I've added a whole bunch of nutrition. No, it's the same crappy dirt. If you want, if you want nutrition on your soil, add some nutrients, add some fertilizer. Taking dirt from here and moving it over here doesn't really add nutrients and it does cause some problems but not everyone can pick up their cores like out here we didn't pick these up <laughs> even though I say I always pick up my cores guess what it was just we couldn't do it out here and so we'll talk about some of the challenges with these okay so we're gonna talk about core aeration real quick now don't forget guys if you're struggling with your lawn at all make sure you get the lawn guides I say that at the beginning of every video I'm sorry but the lawn guides are up they're free, freelawncareguide.com. At the top of that website is uh, the link to the Bermuda and the Zoysia, but that website is the cool season. Calendars, answers to all your questions, product links, everything. Two million people have used them and we don't get your information. We don't want it. No email sign up, no app, nothing. Just use them, but bookmark them so you don't lose them. Okay, so if you follow my channel at all, you'll know that out here, I usually do a spike aeration. I've gotten to the point with this soil that with my, I'll show you here in a minute, but with my aerator, my billy goat, I have the ability to change out spikes. So I can go from a small spike to a large spike to a core aerator. So on this lawn out front here, this was raw, it was woods basically, what a year and a half ago, and then we turned that into a lawn. Same thing over here, this wood line over here, way over there next to the cabin, that was solid woods. And we had a bulldozers come in and just take out all the trees. So it's nasty, it's hard. And I know I need to do a core aeration over there. So even though I wanna start real mowing the front, I really didn't have a good way to pick up the, to pick up the cores because we weren't going short enough with the grass, the grass cut to really be effective picking them up with the leaf sweeper. I may try the leaf sweeper a little bit later to try and get some of these cores, but man, it's a butt whip and pushing that thing around. I'm 61 years old and I mean, I wanna be making videos for you guys, not having you read my obituary. It's tough, man. So back on the old house, I would have Ryan or someone, I'd do it some of the times, but we were cutting right after a scalp. We would scalp it down low, do a core aeration, and then you use that leaf sweeper to pick it up. And I had to put a little piece of special tape on the front. Look for that video if you're, if you're looking for it. But remember, a core aeration, we focus on soil health. We don't. I don't necessarily focus on just dumping fertilizers and all our fertilizers are mild. I believe in, I believe in limited mild fertilizers, but what I focus on is soil health. That's why we put down Humichar. That's why when it starts to get warmer, we'll put down Dirt Booster. Um, and all the fertilizers that I recommend are mild. They're all mild. 
But soil health here, when you pull that core out, it leaves a space, it leaves a hole. And what ends up happening is the soil around that can sort of decompress into that hole. Water goes into it, fertilizer goes into it, and if you're putting out anything like a grub treatment, a grub treatment will go into the hole and get down deeper. So it's a really effective way, it's a really good thing for a lawn. Now another question that always comes up is about pre-emergent. Doc, is it gonna break my pre-emergent barrier? There's been plenty of discussions about that, and I think the majority consensus, and even one study found that it really doesn't impact it enough to make a huge difference. I mean, you're maybe opening up, what, 5% of your surface area, Plus, what I told you in the last video is, what you probably should do is do your scalp, do a core aeration, put your fertilizer, and then come out with your second round of uh, pre-emergent, liquid pre-emergent. Now that's the split program we talk about in the lawn guides. So make sure you understand that. But I really love to do a core aeration on areas like this. Uh, what else do we wanna talk about? What if you're seeding? Yes. I would say definitely, if you're gonna be seeding core aeration and leave your plugs, I know we don't say that, but what you can do is you can, because if you can chop these up with like a push mower or riding mower, you can actually go out to a core aeration, put down seed and then drop your mower down low and chop them up and just, and it creates this sort of mud bath when it, when you run your irrigation. So it is good. Some of that seed will go deeper into the holes, but it really creates a layer of dirt. And so inside that thatch, you have thatch and you have dirt. It's a really good way for seeding. Matter of fact, that's what I did last night after we did a core aeration. And then late in the day, I came out here and I got the ego, dropped it all the way down. It wasn't really, it chopped maybe 10% of the cores. So I went and got the John Deere, rode over it. It maybe chopped another 10%. It's still loaded with cores down there. The only saving grace is that I've got uh, two or three days of heavy rains coming up. And hopefully that stuff will just wash, will mud up and wash away. But it's going to refill those holes. And that's the problem. That's why I say I really like to pick up these cores. Because these cores, they're going to sort of fall apart and melt. They're going to go right back into the holes you just made. Okay, so I'm gonna pop in here real quick because I forgot to mention something really important when it comes to aeration. And that is what's going on with your soil at the time you do the aeration. When should you do an aeration? It really helps if your soil is moist. So if you have a rain coming in, if you have a rain coming in, I would say probably 24 hours after a rain is a perfect time to do a core aeration. If your soil, especially a clay soil, if your soil is dry, and hard over there on that cabin area, it was a struggle to get those plugs, that plugger to actually punch in. On the pond front, the soil was actually moist and was just pulling them out like crazy. So wait until you see a rain event coming and then about 24 hours after that rain event, that's when you wanna do a core aeration. If you have a core aeration scheduled, you need to, and it's dry, you need to run your irrigation system and you need to run it heavy. You wanna try and get moisture down in the first two or three inches of that soil. Do not do a core aeration on a rock hard, dry surface. I'll just tell you right now. So make sure that soil is moist. That's a real important point. Yesterday was probably one of the most brutal days I had, brutal long days in a long time. Now the average person takes 3,500 steps a day. And I actually took a screenshot of this. <laughs> Yesterday, I took 17,847 steps for 8.42 miles. <laughs> it's like, dude, why am I not dead? <laughs> I mean, the day started like at 5.30 in the morning and we started doing projects and doing projects and then we started the aeration. Um, then I worked over with Jeff, we put, we put cages over the blueberries, that kept going. Then I went and put sunflower seeds out around the edges, I put chufa, I put um, corn, wildflowers all around the edge of those fields. Then I grabbed my tiller, I ran my blades, and I ran over that. Then I said, why not grab the toro? So I grabbed the toro and I cut this hole back. Then after that, then I grabbed the ego, I cut that front. Then I grabbed the John Deere. I, cut, I mean, dude, it was brutal day, absolutely brutal day nonstop. So anyways, I'll throw some of that together. Some of this may be random, but I'll put it up. It's something to watch. There usually isn't a whole lot on, so make sure you give a thumbs up. That really does help us out. And uh, I've got about five more videos coming out. We're going to be talking about, by the way, we're going to be talking about DGL, Dark Green Lawn, the new fertilizer. It did go into production, and it should hit the market probably in about a week, a week and a half. I'm going to love that stuff. 
And then I've been sort of rushing all these projects because next month I got to take a trip down to the beach house and I have to actually go fix that lawn. And so I'll be doing a whole series on the fixing that lawn down there too. So here's my life. Here we go. Small spikes, large spikes, and cores. So I'm changing this over to cores now. When you put these on, you want the cores facing, you want the hole facing backwards. All right, so the guys are down there weed eating my pistol range. <laughs> the next thing I need to do is I got some flags and I'm gonna mark my sprinkler heads. Obviously, you don't wanna be punching your sprinkler heads. All right, so I'm teaching the guys how to, I'm teaching the guys how to use this billy goat down here. And you can see right here, it's pulling nice cores. And I'm about that deep right there. I mean, that's almost four inches, but it's a full three inches, these holes. That one's two and a half. So I've got good holes and I've got good cores. We've got a lot of roots and stumps that are right at ground surface. And I told him, I said, don't hold on to that aerator too tight because when it hits those roots, it's gonna bounce up. He just bounced up. He just hit one of those roots. We're not trying to make this perfect out here. We're just trying to get to the point, but let me show you what I mean. That's probably a root. You actually, you got a physical stump you can see right there. You have to be kind of careful. You'll hit rocks, you'll hit stumps, and you just don't want to be holding on it. You want to let that machine bounce up if it wants to bounce up. I was telling them that over here, I actually don't mind if we tear it up a bit. So don't worry about it if you're all of a sudden it's doing too much damage. Okay. Don't worry about it because we're just cutting this with a zero turn. And this a few months ago was a forest. Yeah, <laughs> and that's why we got, I don't know what that bare spot is. I got a feeling that's an old fuel leak or something, maybe like diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. So I may have to dig that up and replace that soil. There's a brown patch I'll show you here in a second. But yeah, like when you hit those bare spots over there, you can sort of put resistance on it and you'll see it. It'll really pound it, really fight it up. Okay. Turn your switch on, I'll pull your handle. So I think what I'm gonna do here is, I've got another bag of contractor mix. And I think I'm gonna put the contractor mix down and the Bermuda down. I'm just gonna pound this with seed. John's over there doing a full aeration on that area over there. I set Jeff up up. He's putting bird cages over my blueberry bushes. Lowe's just pulled up with my stone and I'm gonna build a little circle flower bed over in here. It just doesn't stop. Let me go up and show you the blueberry cages first before I work on this crap. All right, so I've got a ton of this wire that I'm really, I'm really not using right now. And so what we're doing is, is we're just zip tying this. You can see, I don't know why that tape is on there. We're just zip tying it and then put one zip tie here. And if I want to, I can actually just lift this whole thing off. But I know these birds will be getting in here, getting my blueberries, so.
So I need to go grab a couple bags of mulch, but that now looks much better. Much better. So as if I didn't do enough today, what time is it? It's 3.15. So I walked all the back of these fields and I planted, I'm doing an experiment back here, sunflower, corn, chufa, and wildflower all together, all along the back side of these fields. <laughs> so I had to get my little, uh, I had to get my little disc harrow and go back and forth and back and forth and uh, I'm just checking to make sure that most of the seed actually went in. Yep, I, mean, I can barely see any. So I figured, I went up to the uh, barn and grabbed the leaf sweeper just to show you guys. This grass is still too long to actually use this, plus the cores have been ridden over, they're settled down. But if you do have a real short grass, and you wanna use this, in the, one of my previous videos, I showed you guys, you have to build up a little tape front here. And this is a Gorilla Tape. Otherwise the cores want to just come out. They want to be thrown this way. They want to come this way. And you got to block that off more. Just to do an experiment, I came out here. I guess I can show you, it's just not picking them up. And this is a butt whipping. And it's picking up. Picking up a few, but So, I did a small area in here. Man, alive. that's a butt whipping, dude, but I'm only picking up another maybe 10% of the cores. So, I just went over this area here, and you can still, still see all the cores here. Probably because a lot of them are smushed. And the reason why I'm freaking out over my cores is because we're supposed to start real mowing this this coming week, but... What I'm hoping is we have we have two or three strong days of rain supposedly coming in. So I'm hoping these cores just sort of turn to mud and wash out. That's what I'm hoping for. And then we can go back to real mowing this. Morning. So it's uh, two days later. Two days later after the core aeration. Man, this backyard looks fantastic. Now, the only thing I'm doing on this is spike aeration because it's fully, it's alive and well. And I can do a spike aeration every two weeks if I want on this lawn. It doesn't relieve compaction, but I really don't have to worry about compaction on this because we actually sort of scraped this all up and built this lawn last year. And really all I care about is my spike aeration is water, nutrients, oxygen, but besides all the little seed heads in here look how nice that looks isn't that gorgeous so this is a good example you know i'm keeping this at three quarters of an inch one inch maybe and if i had cores on here and tried to run a real mower over this man i would just mess up my blades so it's it's a pain in the butt if you're a short cutter if you're a short cutter then yes you're going to probably have to if you want to jump on that lawn and start real mowing it you're gonna to have to pick it up. But let me tell you what I'm doing over here. A lot of you guys don't know is that the girls have been gone for weeks. Uh, the wife and the dogs went down to the beach house and my brother and sister-in-law actually went down there with them for a little while. And he was down there doing some stuff for me. Um, my blink cameras and my security system, they've been up there for almost three years, two and a half years and I needed batteries replaced. I'm gonna go down there next month and spend a few weeks down there and I'm gonna fix that lawn. That lawn, I haven't touched it in what, a year, year and a half or something? 
So it'll be fun to actually go down there and have a challenge. Now down there, it was all beautiful zoysia, but I've had so much Bermuda move in, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and actually convert it into a Bermuda lawn down there, or just let them battle it out, because I'm tired of fighting it. So this is that area that was actually woods. Soil is bad. We're, um, I'm putting down anything that will grow roots. I've got rye, I've got clover, anything in here. This is more of a natural area than a lawn, just like back over here. But now that I've got a core aeration done and I've got rain coming in, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna put some more contractor mix down here, which is a mix of fescues and rye. And then I don't think I'm gonna put the Bermuda seed down because it's still not warm enough. Um, I, I really need to wait until I see 80s starting to pop up. But let me go out front. Out front, because I was going to put La Prima over here, I now have an extra bag. So what I've done is I've actually put down some of my La Prima Bermuda seed down here. And I think some of that will actually go into the holes and get covered up and actually germinate. So down here... This area is the area that we're gonna start real mowing and we're gonna try and keep it somewhere between, probably about an inch or so. But man, that just looks really good. Um, last week I put out some green shocker here. Then I we did the core aeration, I put down some seed. And so hopefully this heavy, we're supposed to have some heavy rains. That'll sort of wash out these plugs and then we can jump back on it and start real mowing it. And we can test out that new real mower the uh, GK2 series, which I talked about in the last video, which we're giving one of those away. So make sure you're on our mailing list because that's how we're gonna do the giveaway. And then, update over here. Here's the house, here's the shed. This was just a nasty weed area. So in one of my last videos, <laughs> we came over here with the skid steer and we raked this just like we did over here. We just raked it with teeth and raked it and raked it. I spent a whole day over here just raking this. And we cleaned it up and I put down contractor mix, a lot of contractor mix down here. And I actually put down a little bit of clover. And the reason I do that is because whatever's gonna germinate and put roots in the ground, this is raw dirt, that's what I want down. And today, came out here and see what I'm seeing here see these little guys here more than likely that's annual rye grass but I'm starting to see a little green haze all over here I've got clover seed popping up so this is probably clover here and then this is probably annual rye and so this whole area it actually came out pretty smooth we got to pick up some roots and rocks but we're gonna be cutting this with the zero turn we're getting to the point where I feel like I'm starting to get things accomplished. We've got the gardens, the flower gardens in, all the lawns are established. We're starting to work with them. Hit subscribe because when I do that beach series, you may not know it unless you're subscribed because it's a weird algorithm. That's it guys. Have fun. Talk to you later. Dot.